and Theresa Boyd, uh, planning solicitor. Right. Thank you, Ed. So we have a total of nine members present, do we? Correct. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Right. Going down the agenda committee, um, we've done the apologies. Minutes. Has everyone read the minutes and are happy that they are a true record? And if so, I need a show of hands, please, committee. All councillors in favour, Chair. Thank you very much. Right, going on to item three, deputations and public addresses. We have nine speakers on tonight's applications, though I have to say that some of the speakers will be speaking on more than one application. So that's nine speakers on items 12A to 12H. Um, item four, declarations of interest and predetermination. Are there any? No one is indicating. Thank you very much. Item five, matters of urgency, which there are none. Uh, item six, list of current appeals and inquiries. Uh, Rita, I think this is you collated this report. Would you like to bring it up to speed with us, please? Thank you, Chair. Good evening. Um, if you would like to turn to page nine of the agenda, uh, it will show you the, uh, the number of appeals currently pending, uh, there are altogether 11 of them, but this time we have not got any decision to report. Uh, we're still waiting for the planning inspector to, to come back to us with the decision. So, uh, so th this is all I can report for now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rita. I take it, Committee, you've got no questions or comments to make on that. Um... List of appeals and determinations? No? Chair, I think Councillor Markham is indicated. Councillor Markham, Brian, yes, please. Councillor Markham, if you could unmute. Hello, Can, is that yes. all right? Um, Councillor Markham, Brian, you want I to thought, say something? I, I thought I had them muted, but anyway. Um, does this indicate actually that the planning inspectors are not, you know, uh, self-isolated or, or is it, do we know whether they're working or not? Are we likely to wait some months for decisions? Rita, would you like yeah. to comment on that? Through you, Chair. Uh, it's difficult to say. Uh, I think they did have a bit of a backlog, um, but I have to say it has gone a bit quiet in terms of decision recently, but we just have to wait, unfortunately. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rita. Anyone else got anything that you wish to ask Rita, ask Rita of? No? Okay. Thank you, Rita. Uh, then we come on to item seven of the reports. There are none. Item eight, Northamptonshire County Council applications. There are none. Item nine, Northampton Borough Council applications. There are none. Item 10, items for de determination. There are none. Item 11, items for consultation, there are none. So we've come on to the main item, item number 12, which is the main applications that we'll be debating and voting on tonight, um, which are from Northampton Partnership Homes. And we will commence with item 12A, which is on page 11 committee, page 11. And uh, I believe, Adam, this is your report. Would you be kind enough to present it, please? Thank you, Chair. The application relates to Dover Court and proposes an additional story to the existing block of flats to create 10 new flats with a new bin and cycle store. The application site is located to the west of the town centre and the railway station. It's to the north of St James's Road and has the river to the east with open space area, residential to the north and west and commercial to the south and the road extends on up to the St James End local centre. 
The application property outlined in red here contains 53 flats and benefits from 24 parking spaces. I've got four photographs to show members. This is Dover Court as you approach over the bridge, over the railway and the river. This is the frontage onto St James's Road. This is the view across the car path and the access off of Byfield Road. And another view across the car park and you can make out the existing cycle store and bin stores and the one of the neighbouring residential buildings. I've included an aerial view from Google which shows you the wider context of so the application property is here. Um, you can see the residential I referred to to the side and to the rear and, and the different styles you can see pitched and flat roofs and then you've got the commercial to this side the river and the railway over here moving on to the plans this is the existing location plan you can see the building here the existing bin store and cycle store and this is the parking area here i've included an existing floor plan on this one um, all the units apart from one is two bed. This is a two bed, uh, sorry, a two, this is the two bed. All the remaining units are one bed. Here we have the existing elevations. You can see it's a three story flat roof building. There's two of those. And here we have the proposal. So you can see the existing story that's being proposed on top. It would be set back a meter and a half and it would have gray, gray cladding. Here's the proposed third floor plan, so the additional story. There's a mix of bedrooms that proposed as part of this. There would be three one bed units. We have one here and there would be seven two bed units. So here's one there and they're accessed off the existing stairwells. Here's the proposed location plan. There's an additional cycle store proposed to decide the existing one and two existing two additional bays to the refuge store, but the proposal includes no additional parking. This is the elevation of the cycle store and it would be these two additional bays that would be added. Turning to the addendum, whilst this has already been circulated to members, it has been included within the slides. The addendum sets out that there has been an additional objection letter signed by 12 occupiers of the application property received. This letter reiterates the concerns summarised in the committee report relating to the existing issues with the application property, which includes crime, antisocial behaviour, homeless people sleeping in the building, insufficient car parking, and litter and fly tipping. And it also raises the following additional concerns. These are concerns that the additional story and associated noise will adversely affect the health of existing residents, Many existing residents struggle to get upstairs and the occupiers feel the development should include a lift and the existing occupiers also feel the extension would not benefit existing residents of Dover Court. In response, the officer comments, um, the concerns regarding potential noise impacts to existing occupiers of the second floor are noted. However, Environmental Health have assessed the application and raised no concerns regarding the existing occupiers. Furthermore, insulation between the floors would be addressed under the building regs as set out in the committee report. In respect of the comments regarding a lift, there are no planning requirements for a flatted development to be served by a lift. Turning to the security and, and litter matters, conditions seven and eight would require security measures and additional bin stores to be provided as part of the development. The parking issue is addressed in detail in the committee report, but to summarize, it, it, officers consider that the existing exacerbation of the parking shortfall on site would comprise harm arising from the proposed development. However, it's considered this harm is limited due to the highly sustainable location of the site adjacent to the railway station on bus routes and the cycle route and within walking distance of the town centre and the St James End local centre. As such, on balance, officer considers that the parking harm is outweighed by the benefits arising from the provision of 10 affordable housing units. So to conclude, the officer recommendation is to approve subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair.
Thank you, Adam. Uh, right, we have um, four speakers on this application. Now, before I, I call them, I'd like to say to the speakers, you all have three minutes to speak, with the exception of, uh, on 12C, uh, Sue took Mannion, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, who has underlying health issues, and I've allowed her an extra 60 seconds to speak. So she would get up to four minutes because of that particular personal problem. But everybody else, it's three minutes. So I now call upon, and I hope I get this pronunciation right, Mr. Arthur Postiliuk, please. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. That's, that's very good. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I, I apologize if I say something uh, incorrect because I'm Eastern European, so if I sound maybe a bit rude in yeah. my speech or something. Can I just interject, Mr. Postolio? Could you please yeah. identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please? Sorry about that. I should have said that at the outset. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my name is Artur Postoluk. I live in building which is nearby uh, on Byfield Road. It's okay, you have three minutes. Thank you. Okay, so things I would like to say is one of the residents said that there was a sewage problem which was solved. Uh, it took one year to solve that problem. And if you add extra flats on top of that, so it's, it's going to make it worse and more possible a sewage problem. Um, another thing is new levels of building may overlook other properties. Next one. Does original blueprint of building include the ability to add more floors? Uh, another one, survey of residents, which I made myself before the coronavirus uh, outbreak, revealed that most of the residents are against this construction. Uh, another one, more council residents in this crowded building can possibly add more crimes in that not already safe area. You did say about some security measures, and if you could add more on that, please. And another one, um, I think that uh, town should grow in the outskirts, not on top of other building personally, but it should grow in outskirts. That's the natural uh, growth of the town. And that's it for that. Thank you very much. If you thank you, Mr. Postilok, if you just remain uh, with the meeting in case the committee have got any questions to ask of you. Committee, yes. do, you, do you have any questions to ask of Mr. Postilok, please? Would you signal by hand if you do that? Okay, can you see me actually? I'm sorry. I yes, 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 yes. You, you, <laughs> yeah. you. Anyone? No? Okay. No, one, no one's indicating, Chair. But, Thank you. Ed. Thank you, Mr. Postilio. Thank you for that. And I call upon, and um, the only name I've got is Tom. Is Tom with us? No, he's not entered the meeting. He's not. Okay. I will then call upon um, Helen Town, please. Is Helen here? Hi. Hi, I'm, uh, there's, hello Chair, sorry, um, there's two um, representatives from, sorry. If you just identify yourself, Alan, Helen, in what capacity you speak, please. Yeah, no problem. I'm Helen Town, I work for Northampton Partnership Homes, and I'm here this evening specifically to talk um, about housing need in terms of the housing register, affordable housing need. Okay, you have three minutes, Helen. Please, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, my, my colleague Laura is going to pick up on some of the um, points raised specifically around construction and development. But I'm here actually, normally my colleague Nikki McKenzie would speak on this, but we're all acting quite uh, covering a number of fronts at the moment because of COVID-19. So just to say that we're, we are building, we're doing a big push on building because the housing demand is, is so great. We've currently got 3,852 people on the households on the housing register which has actually gone up during COVID-19, not going down. And of those, um, over a third are in the high housing band, so it's emergency bands and band A, which means it's people in very severe housing need. We're typically seeing um, over 100 bids for one bedroom and two bedroom property, sometimes as high as 200. So really, I just wanted to come this evening to say that we're not building for the sake of it. 
um, uh, we're building because there's actually a very, very huge housing demand at the moment, manifest in its worst state in, in rough sleeping, but actually seen in terms of overcrowding and people living in some very poor housing um, conditions across the borough. And actually we particularly see a, a big demand for town centre um, because of its proximity to services and employment and public transport. So that was uh, why I was coming this evening, just really to re reiterate the huge demand that we've got and that we are in a housing crisis in the town. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Helen. Uh, anyone got any questions to ask of Helen, please, committee? Councillor McCutcheon, I can see you, uh, even on my screen, I can see that you've got your hand up. Councillor McCutcheon, Arthur, would you like to ask a question, please? You've got to unmute. Uh, yeah, I've got you now, Arthur. Yeah. Right. yeah, got you now. Yeah. Uh, Helen, can I ask uh, what precautions are being taken with Dover Court, which I visited this afternoon, what precautions are being taken uh, to avoid the rough sleep, sleeper problems there. So we're we're looking at increasing CT, CCTV footage. It's something we're doing across a number of our town centre blocks at the moment. We've been doing a piece of work to look at car parks, and uh, we're reviewing our housing management in terms of the coverage, particularly for the town centre, because obviously that's the area that's, that's most most attractive to rough sleepers. So a combination of CCTV. Uh, we already have a, a fob entry system, which is, um, you know, you can deprogram a program of people come in and come out, which is quite effective. But we are seeing that we need to enhance that with CCT. So that's the main review that we're doing and we're reviewing our approach to housing management to, to be able to do that. So we're, and, and a whole range of mechanisms around people being able to report things online as well and working very closely with the police. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hack, Enum, you've got your hand up, I believe. Got to unmute yourself, man. Somebody. Yeah, yeah, thank, okay, uh, yeah. Th uh, thank you, Chair. I think there were um, there were a few uh, others before me, so I mean, I'm I'm happy to go. Well, on. I'll bring them in. I, I, it's just the one that I saw you on my screen. That was all. You carry on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Three, Chair. Um, hi, Helen. Uh, hi. Just just got a quick one. Um, if I may draw your attention to page um, thirteen, um, NCC, the highway uh, has objected to this application on the basis of um. um having no additional parking. Um, so what have you done to mitigate, mitigate that problem? And uh, uh, in terms of the, um, the, 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 the people who live, um, whether they're nearby or within the, in the, in the building, uh, who has objected on the basis of um, having um, um, extra rough sleepers coming in. And you know, you mentioned that um, you, you know, you will, um, you've taken initiative to install um, extra CCTV, CCTVs to cover that, but um, what else have you done to mitigate the problem? Thank you. Okay, thank you. We've, um, so we've also, another piece of work that we've been doing across the town centre apartment blocks is reviewing car park barriers, which has been a, 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 we've had to try out a couple of options at Dover Court to get one that's worked. The first one um, didn't work well, and we've, we've installed another car park barrier because one of the biggest issues that we find in town centre isn't actually sufficient parking for residents, but it's about other people parking their commuters and people working in the town. So the new car park barrier is, has got a fob access, which means that only residents can use it. Um, and we have found that we've, we've had a positive response back on that. Okay, Peter, was, is there some others that want? I can see Councillor Russell on my screen, but is there any else? Yes, yes Chair. Councillor Birch and Councillor Markham have also indicated. So we'll take Councillor Birch, Councillor Markham, and then Councillor Russell. So, Councillor Birch, Jane, uh, would thank, you like thank to Thank you, come Chair. Um, Helen has already answered the question I was going to raise. Okay, thank you. Councillor Markham, Brian? Um, uh, after my touch and that's the, the question I was going to um, raise, Chair, so yeah. I'm okay. Thank you. Councillor Russell, Catherine, yes? Yes, thank you. Um, Helen, I'm assuming you're going to be answering some questions relating to NPH, and I'd like to know what consultation you made, if any, with the residents, existing residents, and whether or not you consulted residents in the vicinity. Yes, we did. So we so we wrote to all of the residents individually right at the beginning of this before long, a long, long time ago. And we've done subsequent letters. We've offered to do face to face uh, meetings with people and also spoken to the ward councillor if she wanted to sort of help, you know, be part of that. 
And that's about making sure we are mindful of individual needs of people living um, in, in the apartment block so that actually if there's people who might be particularly affected by construction, um, if there's people already living there that are maybe also have got other housing needs as well, that sometimes gets it comes out in these consultations. So it's about understanding some of the issues. And so things like the car park barrier and the original one that we had in before actually came out during that consultation process. So, um, so this is about uh, consultation around the actual construction and the design and also um, you know, the actual occupation and management of that scheme. So things like, for example, concerns raised about antisocial behaviour has helped inform the need for a local lettings plan, which has been really successful in other places that we've, uh, where we've done them, where we've actually been really strict about criteria for people moving in, for example, or people having to be not in work or, you know, ensuring that people haven't got a history of antisocial behaviour when they're moving in. So there's some of the things that have come out of the consultation. Okay, right. Thank you, Helen. Right, there's no more with any questions, I believe. Okay. Uh, Sorry, guys. Can I just add something? No, sorry, sorry you're not. You're not able no, to make any no, further comments. No, Thank you. No, you can't. You've had your three minutes. Thank you. Oh, right. Okay. So, um, I now call upon. Thank you, Helen. I now call upon Laura Elliot, please. And Laura, if you'd identify yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. Laura there. Good, good evening, Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah, I just wondered, did you hear what I said? I wondered if you could identify yourself, Laura, and in what capacity you speak, please. Yes, good evening, Chair Councillors. My name is Laura Elliott. I'm a project manager for the Plan Investment Team at Northampton Partnership Homes. Right, you have three minutes, Laura. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so Helen's already touched on this, but this application for 10 flats at Dover Court in St. James is another development intended to add to the much needed housing stock for Northampton. We, the planned development using a similar lightweight steel structure system to that previously approved by the committee for the highly successful Centenary House project is building up to form an additional floor with brand new flats and it builds on over 1.6 million pounds worth of investment completed at Dover Court in the past four years. The previous investment included full refurbishment of the building and flats, new door entrance system, a complete overhaul of the internal drainage and the provision of fogged access various parking area, which means that only residents with issue T fog can gain access to Dover Court car park albeit um, with some ongoing amendments. As the building of Dover Court is almost an exact replica of Woodstock, MPH has treated the development similarly and worked to reduce any potential concerns around impacts on parking and social behaviour, visual impacts unrelated to other buildings, and my adding it might have seen an impact on existing residents during the work. This has been addressed by the following. By the following. Um, so yeah, again, just again, just to read about, um, about um, the Labour King and so the sustainable location and the proximity to the train station, the train station of the town centre, and to highlight, to highlight that these various things in Germany, this term is by the period of the over period of the over period of as um, we have already installed in the old stock. You're crackling up, Laura. It's, it was very crackly that. We could up, it was very intermittent, intermittent but... Uh, uh, have you finished uh, speaking on this particular? Sorry, if that's all right. If that's all right, yeah. So, um, so just um, pick up on head and pick up on head and the object will be able to move towards the local level to the local level. Um, ensuring that um, it will be that the tenants will be unable to move in the house back because they can have a vision of records and that will be able to debate. Um, um, in terms of in terms of vision, the access is reduced. Yeah. Laura, it's very it's very crackly. We we haven't heard you very clearly. Um, but have, have you finished at the moment on this speaking? We pick up with woods trying to catch in on my phone. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I might have to pack. I might have my phone in my phone chair. Sorry. Okay, I think Laura's having difficulties because she's actually on yeah. her phone. 
Um, right. so, so it's a te technical issue. Um, in the circumstances, Helen, are you aware of the headline issues that Laura wanted to raise? And Chair, would you be willing to accept Helen to complete Laura's presentation? I would in this instance, yes. Thank you. I'm really sorry about that. I know she's really struggled today with her internet connection at home, so it's it's been really really difficult. Um, I think the, the gist of what Laura was saying was that um, it's we, we've we've been uh, worked a pain to try and a pain to try and minimise disruption in terms of construction. So looking at an off-site uh, constructed lightweight steel frame to go on the top of um, the apartments, which we've already we've already done before a centenary house, which was overslaid house. So it's something that's actually been um, established before, and um, and actually following the feedback from planning and the consultation, reduced the number of units and amended the design accordingly. So again, just going back to the earlier point that Councillor Russell made, that we did respond to the consultation to a to try and sort of mitigate the. Um, any sort of disruption, but also to respond to the feedback around density and design. Right. Um, I'm a little bit um, puzzled as to who I should get to uh, answer the question. Should any of the committee uh, ask them? Shall I put it straight to you, Helen? Because if Laura is experiencing difficulties, it will only exacerbate the problem. If, if I ask the committee, which I have to, it's their right to ask questions. Do you mind if I ask them of you? That's absolutely fine. Okay, right. I think in this particular case, because Laura's experiencing technical issues, we'll direct any questions committee that you may wish to have um, to Helen. Committee, any questions to ask? Councillor McCutcheon, I can see you, Arthur. Is anyone else just before? Anyone else, Peter? Nobody else is indicating, Chair. Thank you, Ed. Councillor McCutcheon, Arthur, yes, please. Got to unmute yourself. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything, uh, were there any problems revealed uh, when we looked at the, when you looked at the, um, internal drainage which was mentioned there um because this is an area which is prone to, to flooding uh and i was wondering on two counts first is anything we've done about the flooding in the area and is anything going to be done because it's part of the uh, flood preventions uh the clearing of culverts uh, especially in that area was a problem back in 98 when we had brought flooding and um also uh, one of the problems that was, uh, uh, has been raised by uh, residents there is whether the sewage is up to taking the additional population. Thank you. Um, well, as we regard before, Ellen comes in, the Environment Agency, Arthur, have raised no objections to this on, on, a, on, on any grounds. And, um, but the surface water drainage strategy, sewage and that, uh, and the sewage, they, the Anglia Water is saying it has the available capacity. But Helen, would you like to come in on that? What Arthur's asked. Yeah. So we, so the um, the design, uh, David Smith Associates, who are working on the design and all the and the uh, infrastructure around this, they, as part of it, they have reviewed uh, drainage and and utilities and the sort of whole um, side of things around it, um, and to and and have their view is it has got capacity and, and they, they tested that. So all the electrics, you know, all the utilities and the drainage to the site. But if that's coming up as a concern that's been raised again, I'm happy to get that to look, looked, absolutely happy to get that looked at again, as we do when people raise things generally in council properties. So um, more than happy to take that away as, a, as something we'd be committed to look at again. But certainly we, we wouldn't bring forward a design that we didn't think was feasible in terms of um, infrastructure. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Helen. Thank you, Arthur. Anyone else can ask any question? No? Nobody else indicating chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Right. Adam, before I come back to you and ask the committee to ask questions of you, have you got anything you want to come back on on what you've heard the speakers say, please? No comments, sir. You haven't? Right, committee. It's now questions to to Adam, does anyone have any questions directly to Adam, please? 
Councillor Birch is indicating, Chair. OK, Councillor Birch, Jane, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, Adam, um, one of the um, issues that was brought up in the document was the air quality. St James is known for very, very poor um, air quality and heavy pollution. Um, is there sufficient ventilation in these flats without opening windows? Um, you know, that's, that's something that I've just, that I've noticed in the planning documents and there doesn't seem to be um, a particularly clear um, answer to that. Adam, would you like to come back on that? Thank you, Chair. Environmental Health have assessed this application and their advice is that there can there is suitable ways to ventilate the rooms but they want that controlled by a condition so condition six is looking for a air quality assessment and ventilation strategy for the building but it is likely that some of the facades will, will be designed so that the windows can be ventilated the rooms can be ventilated while the windows are fixed shut thank you thank you chair just to let you know that councillor golby has left the meeting pardon he's left the meeting Councillor Golby has get has left the meeting. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else got any questions to ask of um, Adam? Please. No. Right. Uh, can Chair, can Councillor Birch and Councillor Markham have indicated to ask questions. Uh, Councillor Birch has just asked a can question. I have, Issue? Yeah, can I have a supplementary on that, please? Yeah, please yeah. carry on. Adam, you say that there is um, a condition on the um, about the ventilation. Has this been resolved, or is this still something that is going to be looked at? Adam. Adam. Councillor Birch, this is something that's going to be looked at. The, the documents that came in support of the application resolved the noise related issues from road traffic and it was ascertained that the railway didn't give rise to an unacceptable impact but it, it didn't fully address ventilation and air quality so we will be requiring further assessments to be submitted at the condition stage. Okay, um, thank you. Councillor Markham, Brian, got a question? It's a question, Brian. Uh, yes, Chair, I've got a question. Um, yeah. In so much as uh, from Adam, am I right in thinking that the previous application for Dover Court, when, when it was all um, refurbished, also had a similar condition that the, to look at ventilation and air quality? Uh, and I wondered whether, whether that actually resulted in anything changing um, to the flats that were built four or five years ago? Adam, you want to come back? Thank you. There wasn't a previous app. You don't need permission to refurbish buildings, so there wasn't actually a, a planning application for that. And in terms of the condition, we can only require details for the new occupier. So for the additional story, we couldn't, we wouldn't be reasonable under planning to sort of retrofit those proposals resort to the lower floor. Okay, thank you. Right, no one else got any questions? Then we come on to <clears throat> then we come on to comments committee. Any comments please? I'm asking for comments now, please. Councillor Brian Markham would like to speak, Chair. Right, Councillor Markham, Brian, again comments please. Yeah, the comment well first of all I remember whether it, maybe it wasn't a planning, there were certainly discussions and involvement uh, of the community when the previous refurbishment was done and there was some mention of noise and uh, pollution um, uh, from the traffic and also air pollution from traffic. Um, so, uh, in general, on the comment, uh, firstly, the comment in the neighbours who said overlooking and impact on the, the, the new story, the fact that it's set back from the existing roof line, I think overcomes those issues. But the big issue with 
yes, we need yeah. one bedroom yeah. and two bedroom accommodation, yeah. and we need it near the town centre. Yeah. But Dover Court and other buildings years ago suffered the same problems that can happen now, and that is antisocial behaviour, behaviour of tenants and their visitors sometimes. And I'm just pleased to hear that um, MPH will be looking at the way these buildings are managed uh, in the future. And they're not necessarily planning matters, but I think it applies to several applications tonight. Um, it's a pity that we no longer have a concierge system um, or community rooms or even a well a concierge in these buildings because they can soon deteriorate and need further refurbishment in, in the future. But we, we have to find homes for people who need them. Well, on, on that point that you've made, Brian, I mean, the, the Police and Crime Prevention Design Advisor has got no fundamental objections to this. Um, creation of an additional storage in this building, so therefore antisocial behaviour, the police are virtually saying, well, they should be able to address that. And at the end of the day, we are talking about um, extra flats here that's going <coughs> to add to the um, five-year housing land supply, which we can't meet <coughs> at the moment. Um, so, is there anyone else who's got any comments, please, before I go to the to the vote. Nobody no. else is indicating, Chair. Thank you very much, Ed. Right. Members, what we have in front of us is the officer's recommendation for approval to this application. Now, I need a show of hands. So, do I have a proposal that we accept the officer's recommendation, please? Uh, Councillor Lane got there first, Chair. He's proposing that we accept it. Do I have a seconder, please? I'll second it, if no one else will. Councillor Birch is seconding. Is Councillor Birch seconding? Councillor Carly thirding. Yeah, Councillor Birch seconded, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Then I ask all those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation for this application, please. Two, three. I count eight hands in the air, Chair. So in that particular case, if Count Councillor Gold is left the meeting, that is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Councillor Golby is in the waiting room. I'm going to admit him now for the next item. Okay, thank you, Maisie. Let me know when you've done that, then I can start it, please. He's in the meeting now. Thank you, Maisie. So we're back to nine members now, right? Okay, thank you. Right, committed. This is item 12B on page 21. Uh, the, the location is Woodstock Billing Road and it's for an additional story to existing block of flats to create 10 new flats with new bin and cycle stores. Uh, <clears throat> Adam, this is your uh, report. Would you please present this one, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The application site is located to the east of the town centre and it's to the south side of the Billing Road on the corner with the Cliftonville Road. The hospital is to the southwest and the Wellingborough Road is just off the north of the screen. The application property outlined in red on this plan contains 49 flats and some nine par 19 parking spaces. The application property and it, the three neighbours to the west and the one neighbour to the south all fall outside the Billing, Con Billing Road conservation area which wraps around the site. The closest neighbour is York House to the south of the site which is a three-storey block of flats and Elgin House is located to the west of the site and is occupied by a solicitor's practice and shares an access drive with the application property. I've got seven photos to show you on this one. This is uh, the corner of the Billing Road and Cliftonville Road. Here's a photograph looking kind of 
up the Clifton Mill Road, you can see the, the neighbor York House here. This is the edge of the application property here. And you can see the levels gently rising up. And then this is looking further back down the Clifton Mill Road. This is the application property over here, York House. And then you've got a more recent three and a half story development here. This is on the Billing Road. You've got the solicitors firm here, the application property and its access in here. And you can see this is a shared drive and there's some informal car parking taking place on this. Here we have a view into the car park. You can see the existing cycle store and just the edge of the bin store, just on the edge of the photograph here. And, and this is the relationship with York House. And I've got a couple more photographs looking at the relationship with York House and again showing the cycle and bin stores. And again, this is between the application property here with existing windows and York House to the side here. I've also included two angled views from Google Earth to show the context. You've got Woodstock, the application property here and its car park. You've got the solicitors building here, York House, the new flats behind and the care home beyond that. Residential here, as I say, the conservation area sort of wraps along around here and then comes back in around the back here. And this is looking the other way, looking up Cliftonville Road, and you can see the variety of, of styles of buildings in the locality as well. You've got the flat roof of Woodstock and York House. You've got pitched roof with flat crowns in the middle, it's more shallow pitches, flat roofs again over here. Moving on to the plans accompanying the application, this is the existing location plan, and you can see the existing bin and cycle stores at the edge of the site. Here we have the existing elevations. You've already seen photographs of these. It's a, a three-story flat roof, flatted development. So here we have the proposal, um, the extra roof, extra floor put on the building. It's set in um, approximately one and a half meters in. And it would be gray clad. Again, it's just set in from the existing roof. Here we have the new third floor plan. It would have 10 flats, three one bed units, one here, and seven two bed units, there's one here. Here's the proposed location and site plan, and you can see there's an exist additional two bays to the bin store being added over here, and an additional cycle store is shown here, but officers are recommending a condition to get revised details of the cycle store due to its size and proximity to the existing building. To confirm the proposal does not include any additional parking on the site. Here we have a photograph of the cycle store, potentially, but as I say, we're potentially looking to get that recited or redesigned. And then the additional two bays would be the two on the right shown on this drawing. Again, whilst the addendum has already been circulated, it's also included within the slides for ease, ease of viewing. And essentially it sets out that there have been two further objection letters received. These letters refer to the previous objections as already summarized in the committee report and also include the following additional points. The questioning the roof at Wood, Woodstock and it's recently been repaired and whether it's suitable to support the additional weight there's a representation suggesting that studies indicate those living in overcrowded buildings and densely populated areas are at increased risk of coronavirus and concerns regarding the health of vulnerable neighbours due to the close proximity of the development. In responding to those, um, the concerns regarding structural stability of the existing building is, is a building regs and not a planning matter. Regarding overcrowding, as set out in the report, it's considered that the proposed accommodation would afford an acceptable standard of amenity for both future occupiers and also the existing occupiers of the building. And in terms of the proximity to, to York House, Woodstock is currently located some four meters in from the boundary and the roof would be the roof, the extra story would be set a further 1.5 meters back. And as such, it's considered by officers that it would not have an unacceptable impact on the amenity of York House. So to conclude, the officer recommendation is to approve. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Adam. Well, we have three speakers on this committee. And I call upon uh, Gemma Dudley, please, if she'd like to come forward and, and speak. 
Yes, thank you. Gemma, if you just announce yourself, Gemma, introduce yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. Yes, good evening. Um, my name's Gemma Dudley. I'm the Head of Planning at Hewitts and Solicitors and I'm objecting to the application as the occupiers of the adjacent Elgin House. Okay, thank you. You have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's already a hugely inadequate level of parking provision at Woodstock. Um, the existing 49 flats benefit from just 19 spaces, um, whereas the council's parking standards indicate that at least 50 spaces should be available. Um, this situation is obviously going to be exacerbated by the proposed development, which incorporates no additional parking spaces, um, whereas the parking standards would indicate that an additional 20 spaces are required. The existing lack of parking already leads to unauthorised, unlawful on-street parking, giving rise to obstruction and inconvenience. Um, Hewitson's particularly affected since we share an access road from Binning Road with the park. Um, it's common for the occupiers of the flats to park on the common access road, thereby obstructing access to our premises for clients and employees. Um, we've also experienced instances of unauthorised parking in Algon House car park itself. Um, and the proposed flats will simply give rise to more unauthorised, obstructive and unsafe parking and should therefore be refused permission. Um, the officer's report to committee dismisses these concerns on the basis that double yellow lines are in place, um, but those parking restrictions really aren't enforced. Um, at the very least, I don't just counsel being a condition to address these parking issues, um, for instance, a requirement to appoint a travel coordinator or similar to prevent or encourage parking violations would be welcomed. Um, even disregarding the unauthorised parking, gaining access to Billing Road from the shared access is already quite difficult and unsafe at, diff at busy times. Um, it, the access is close to a junction controlled by traffic lights. Um, there's frequently a lot of queuing traffic. The proposed development will simply add to the difficulties with the access, um, and that's going to be particularly problematic during the construction phase. Uh, we also feel that the introduction of 10 additional units at Woodstock will be detrimental to the amenity of neighbouring properties and the productivity of local businesses, including our business, as a result of the comings and goings that that will give rise to. And the addition of an additional store will have an impact on the outlook currently enjoyed from our premises, which is likely to give rise to a lot of uh, loss of light. Um, overall, we just feel the proposed development would, would give rise to a scale and density of development that's not consistent with the character of this area. Um, the plot's already dominated by car parking, bins, well, thank you, Gemma. If you just remain <coughs> with us to see if the committee have got any questions to ask of you. Committee, do you have any questions to ask of Gemma, please? Councillor McCutcheon, author, yes. Got to unmute yourself. I'm on mute. Yeah, you're on now. Yeah. Um, what form of control would be satisfactory to it, your company solicitors uh, for the parking control? Is it control that you have for yourself or the controlling of other people? Gemma, would you like to respond to that, please? Uh, well, I think it's just the, the enforcement of the existing yellow lines that are in place, really. Um, it just seems that, that it's not enforced at all. Um, I, I think if there were, it was somebody um, responsible for controlling parking, as I say, some kind of travel coordinator, travel plan officer that um, could perhaps try and um, discourage residents from parking. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's for us to enforce it. I think um, it, it needs to be the... Um, the occupiers themselves that are responsible for, for ensuring this doesn't happen. Thank you. Anyone else got any questions to ask of Gemma, please? Nobody else is. Oh, uh, Councillor Brian Markham is indicating, Chair. Councillor Markham, Brian, yeah. Um, oh, I'll just ask um, Gemma. Um, 
I, I recognise the access road and the difficulty gaining access. Just, just to be clear in my own mind, the, the double yellow lines referred to are on the on public highway, or are they just painted on a private access road to the properties that that it feeds. Is it a private road or is it public highway? Thank you, Gemma. Yeah, you want to answer that? Um, as I understand it, it's a private road. Okay, All right. thank you. Anyone else got any questions to ask of Gemma? Nobody's indicating, Chair. Right. Thank you very much, Gemma. Thank you. And I'll call upon Helen Town again, please. Helen, for the record, for this particular application, would you just re-identify yourself again in what capacity you speak, please? Yes, thanks, Chair. Yes, I'm Helen Town from Northampton Partnership Homes. Um, and my colleague, Laura, I think she's, Laura sorted out her, hopefully sorted out her uh, internet connection now using a different device. So I was just going to pick up again on housing need, reiterate the points I made at the last one. And, and also we just quite like to pick up on the point about parking, if that's okay, Chair. Yeah, you're um, Okay, thank you. So just to reiterate the, the point I made at the last, that we have 3,852 people on the housing register um, and a huge number um, in relation to demand for one and two bedroom homes. So the, the, the housing demand is uh, very, very strong for provisions such as this. And that is what motivates MPH's development programme to respond uh, to the demand upon the Borough Council around affordable housing uh, manifested in its worst case in homelessness. Just picking, Laura's going to pick up on some points around construction, but just around the parking point, we have been trying to follow up on that. So part of the issue is you're absolutely right, is around the status of that road. So we're speaking to highways uh, around where we stand on a traffic regulation order to be able to enforce that. We do know the registration numbers of the residents that live at Woodstock, because people declare that, they have to, to get a fob. And we have been able to find out that a lot of the people parking in that road, they're not, it's not residents, it's people working in, and uh, uh, sort of socialising in the town centre. So if we can sort out the traffic regulation order or, or a, a mechanism to enable traffic wardens to be able to enforce those double yellow lines, that should resolve that issue. So I think it's important to note that isn't about parking overflow from Woodstock residents. That is about a separate issue specific to that, to that street. And I hope that's okay. And, and in terms of the car park, um, following on from the points that I made around Dover Court, that we do have for, we, we bought in a uh, car park barrier because residents were complaining about non-residents using that car park uh, for their own use. So people who are working um, in the very close proximity to Woodstock in, in local businesses um, using that when they weren't actually living there. So that's been well received by, by residents. But the bit about the yellow lines is a separate issue which we need to deal with outside of this application. Is that it, Helen? Have you, is that it? Have you finished speaking, Helen? Yeah? Sorry, yes, thanks, Chair. Yes, I have. Yeah. Right, if you just remain there in case anybody's got a question. I've seen on my screen at Councillor Russell. Catherine, you have a question to ask of Helen, please. Yes, yeah. hello. Right. Yeah. Um, Helen, thank you very much for your, your um, responses there. If there are in more cars, uh, you obviously have a limited capacity of parking for vehicles in this, in this block. What do you do if you have more cars and the number of parking? Do you still hand out parking, um, uh, give people opportunities to park there? Helen, do you want to come on that? Yeah, to, so typically we've, what, we've, what we've been finding since we have uh, introduced FOBs uh, and car park barriers in the last couple of years into the town centre, so we've been doing it in Springborough, St James and the town centre, is that actually that's actually that's actually made the parking situation loads better for people because uh, uh, council um, apartment blocks their parking it was being abused by people like I say shopping and working in the town centre so the feedback we've had from tenants is it's better um, and and on the whole we have enough spaces for people that have got cars they have to have cars registered at their address so it's for for people that are living there that have got the cars registered there and that, and that's how we and that's how we manage it. 
So we um, typically in, in town centres, we, we do find a lot of people are moving into parks who don't have them because they're working in the town and making use of public transport as well. And we try and promote that, obviously, from a sustainability point of view, which is why we're putting things like additional bike storage as well. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else can, Anyone else got any questions to ask of Ellen, please? Nobody's indicating, Chair. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Are thank we you. okay? Thank to, you. I'd like to call upon Laura, Laura Elliott, please. Laura, if you've sorted your technical issues out, have you? Can you hear me now, Chair? Yes, I can, Laura. And if you just identify yourself and in what capacity you speak again, please, for this particular application. Sure. Good evening, uh, Chair Councillors. My name's Laura Elliott. I'm Project Manager for the Planned Investment Team at Northampton Partnership Homes. Okay, you have three minutes. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so very similarly to Dover Court, this uh, plan development is um, building up to form an additional floor, and that's using the lightweight steel structure um, system that we previously um, implemented at the successful centenary house project. Um, so that came to the committee some time ago. Um, we, uh, this particular application has been in development for some time in order for MPH to respond to consultation with local residents and businesses. Um, and the proposals before you this evening reflect those um, agreed changes. So um, the, the main concerns previously raised, we've already discussed um, and uh, Gemma this evening um, highlighted the issues around um, parking and also and social behaviour and the visual impact in relation to other buildings. Um, these we've been able to address by agreeing the following, um, that we, uh, as Helen already highlighted, we're, we're working with highways to um, look at traffic, traffic regulation order for that feeder road um, towards the parking barrier. Um, that, that already said that, that we have had some success with that existing barrier system. Equally, again, just to, to raise the point that came up with Dover Court, that um, the, the actual location, the close proximity to the town centre was one of the reasons why we felt it might be um, a, a, a good location for this um, additional sort of light, lightweight steel system. Um, We, um, can, you, can you still hear me okay? Yes, yes, yes. So, um, or, also, if you picked up on my previous point about Join a, local, the meeting. a local lettings policy, um, that potential tenants will be unable to move into the flats if they have any previous convictions or records of antisocial behaviour. Um, it visually, in terms of visual impact, the offset was reduced um, in order to minimise the visual impact um, to surrounding buildings. And we also reduced the number of um, units from 14 to 10, which again, I think there was also a connection to the demand for parking there as well. And um, as previously discussed with Dover Court, bin storage has been increased as well. So um, the, the Metro store, your bin stores that the um, committee will already, already be aware of, they'll include waste and recycling facilities. Um, so our intention really is to build on our experience delivering um, really quite challenging construction projects with residents in situ. Um, the, the steel frame structure is largely fabricated off-site, so um, again, minimising the impact of the works as they take place. And our team um, also working with the residents, existing residents of the building to um, create individualised plans, um, uh, you know, to minimise the impact whilst we're actually breaking through, going up to form that extra floor. To three minutes. Thank you. Laura, I must ask you to um, bring the curtain down on that at the time being, but if you just remain with us in case the committee have got any questions to ask of you, please, I'd be grateful. Committee, do you have any questions to ask of Laura, please? No one's indicating, Chair. No. Thank you, Peter. In that case, thank you, Laura. Uh, Adam, would you like to come back on anything that the speakers have mentioned, please? The only thing I'd highlight, Chair, is that the local highway authority haven't actually objected to this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right, committee. It's questions to Adam. Anyone got any questions to Adam, please? 
Councillor Russell, I can see you, so I'll take you first. Catherine, yeah, please, question. Um, yes, thank you. Adam, has this application been before the committee previously at any time? No, Councillor Russell. Okay. Sorry, it just looked... Sorry, Catherine, yeah, what? I thought it had been put before the committee previously um, some time ago. An installation of an automated entry gate system was put in front of the uh, committee while well, it, it was approved. And uh, there was a prior notification for demolition of one block to two, two garages, prior approval, not required. So and then there was one in 2016, chase of use of two communal rooms into one bedroom self-contained dwellings, that was approved. 2016. Thank you. Okay, anyone else got any questions to ask of Adam? Chair, right. Councillor Birch and Councillor Goldby indicated. Right. Councillor Birch, Jane, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Adam, the question on ventilation again, please. Um, you know, however, there's no ventilation strategies proposed. Uh, in 6.7 and um, also just checking that there is security that there are fobs fob control on doors leading into and from stair calls and lifts so it's ventilation and security please just to thank you adam i think condition six the reports to the con uh, ventilation system but please go on yeah yeah on, on this application the environmental health didn't raised direct air quality concerns they but they were they did want the ventilation to be clarified because of the noise issues relating to the busy road and, and it would need windows to be closed so condition six requires further details of ventilation strategy to be provided for the building and then it's condition eight on page 30 that relates to getting clarification and further details of security measures as necessary for this development thank you Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Councillor Goldby, Matt, yeah, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Yeah. All I just wanted to say is that I keep being told I've got an unstable internet connection, and I kept dropping out of the first application, so I apologise for that. Okay, can hear you now. Have you got a question, Matt? No? No, no, I just wanted okay. to say that. All right, thank you. Anyone else got any questions, please? No? Councillor Carley indicated she'd like to speak, Chair, I think. Okay, Councillor Carley, Muna, please, yeah. Sorry, no, I didn't indicate, Chair. You didn't? I'm mistaken, okay. I apologise. Okay, so there's no one got any questions to ask of Adam then. So can we go on to comments, please, um, committee? This is comments. Anyone got any comments? I can see you, Arthur, Councillor McCutcheon. Arthur, yeah. You've got to unmute yourself, Arthur. Got you now. Um, yeah. well, the major problem, or a major problem here, is uh, <clears throat> parking control. And anybody who's driven around there, trying to find a parking space to go to the hospital or what have you, uh, will know that there are rank upon rank of uh, traffic wardens around uh, whose numbers ought to be used. Um, and so it, what it seems to me is required, is all that's required, is a definition of who's responsible for the area, for the yellow lines, and being told to get on with it in order to, to, to clear this up. So I, I would think it, the capacity is there, and I think it ought to be used. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Arthur. Anyone else got any comments, please? Committee? Councillor Russell, I can see you. Catherine, yeah, please. Thank you. Um, all I can say is I, just, I really feel for the existing residents. I don't know how long this building will take, and I don't know what distract, uh, what, what um, kind of noise and, and um, dis distraction it's going to cause. Um, I'm sure it's worth it for the, the number of flats and accommodation that's coming. But um, I, d I don't know how how difficult it's going to be for the existing tenants. 
Okay. Catherine, thank you. Anyone else got any comments, please? Uh, Councillor Markham's indicating, Chair, and Councillor Carley afterwards. Okay. Councillor Markham, Brian, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I must admit, reading this uh, last week and then hearing the comments this evening by the objector regarding the traffic situation, um, existing parking situation, I was thinking originally that without in, increasing parking, um, maybe this shouldn't be allowed. However, I accept that, uh, and I know people who live in, in that area, in the town centre, and a couple of council property tenants not far away, and yes, the parking is a problem, but it's something that the tenants and residents suffer just as and businesses suffer uh, because of the hospital or the town centre. So if it can be sorted out, I suspect it's not a matter of just sending the traffic wardens around there because I suspect they have very little important powers. On the other comments about overlooking and so on, well, you know, we're a town centre lo location an extra story in the town centre location, setback as it is, actually is making good use of space. So as far as the development and the design of the building, I'm in favour of it. Um, and I'm pleased now that we're maybe addressing, not least on behalf of the tenants, the, um, the parking situation. Thank you, Brian. Councillor Kelly, Muna, yeah, please. Yes, yeah, through you, Chair, thank you. Yeah. I just want to basically just add on uh, in terms of um, just echoing what um, uh, Helen Town has said. Um, you know, I just wanted to echo, it had worked um, a couple of blocks in, in particularly in my ward in Spring Burrows, uh, in terms of using the FOBs and, you know, uh, having people to be able to register uh, in that kind of term, you know, who lives in the properties and how many car park spaces they could be able to use. So if if that's going to be um, addressed in this, in this particular application as well, then I think that would be uh, something that is worth, worth really doing. And thank you, Mona. Anyone else? I'd just like to sum up if there isn't that the highways authorities have got no objections on this, uh, as we as we read. I do take the point of what um, Gemma Dudley said, but I was um, quite encouraged by the response that Helen uh, Town and Laura Elliott gave. Uh, <clears throat> so, in general, weighing up you know checks and balances, and the fact that we do need. Um, accommodation. This is suitable, in my opinion, for the area where it is, even though there is the parking. I take Arthur's point uh, about the parking, yeah, and I'm sure that perhaps with Helen and uh, Laura's help, or Northampton Partnership Homes, we can perhaps um, encourage that to be pleased more um, diligently. But on the vein, um, I would support this application, but with there being no more comments, um, Councillor Lane comments? is indicated. Councillor Lane, Jamie, yes, yeah, sorry. You propose we accept the officer's recommendation for approval. Thank you. I'll take that as a proposition now, Jamie. Thank you. Can I have a seconder? Is that you, Councillor Hack? Yeah. Hannah, seconding. Okay. All those in favour, do I accept the officer's recommendation for approval? I count nine hands in the air, Chair. That is unanimous then. So this application is approved unanimous. Thank you, committee, on that one. Thank you for the speakers as well. Thank you very much. <coughs> right. We now come on to item 12C, committee, which is on page 33. Uh, item 12C is lock-up garages adjacent to 62 Maiden Castle. The description of this application. Sorry. Sorry. The description of this application is a demolition of existing lock-up garages and development of two flats, and the provision of off-street parking, repositioning of step path access to western side of the site. Anna, good evening. I believe this is your report. Would you like to present it, please? Thank you, Chair. You said the application is for the demolition of the garages in the direction of two flats with parking. 
Um, firstly, just to remind you, hopefully you have seen the addendum. Um, we have um, received a new street scene plan and as such we propose to amend condition two to have the new number. I will show you the plan later in the presentation. We've also received um, four additional letters objecting to the application. Um, I also wanted to add that we propose an additional condition if it is approved and that is requiring details of lighting um, to ensure that adequate lighting is provided particularly for the proposed um, alleyway which we will see later in this presentation. So I'll just skip through those and you've seen those earlier. So the application site is this garage lockup site on Maiden Castle. This is the road along here and then the garage site is here. You see to the rear there are a network of alleyways that link the estates together and you've got your garages here. So if we go to the aerial image you can see it more clearly. So this is the garage blocks, some existing open parking and you can also link through to the alleyways. So to show you the um, site from the street scene, so this is the garages that would be demolished and the proposed building would fall in line with this terrace row that you can see to the left. And in the center, you can see the current access that people can walk through to get to those alleyways I mentioned. You'll also note, but you'll see this in further emails and further slides, that the site, because it was used for garages, has been leveled, so it is slightly higher from both the properties either side. So this is again looking towards 62 Maiden Castle. So the proposed building would be in line with this terrace row, and you can see that it is slightly lower. This, just to point out, this tree in the picture has actually been removed since this photo was taken. Um, and this is looking towards Terrace Road to the right, to the north. Um, you can see, hopefully, that the ridge steps down. And this is the end 163, which would be in line with the building, which would be over this side. This is looking up through the existing pedestrian access to those alley um, footpaths that I mentioned. So the building would go on the right here. And again, this looks at where the building would be, but from the alleyways. So the terrace road at the moment faces the um, footpath as opposed to Maiden Castle Road. And the building would go next to it here. And you can see the level changes um, on that photo. This just shows you um, some neighbours raised that they wanted to still be able to walk through to the play area. So this is the play area that's the other side of the um, garage blocks. And the proposal also includes some new parking on Maiden Castle Road itself, and that would be here. And these two trees would be um, cut down to accommodate that. So the proposal is to erect a two-storey building in line with the existing row of terraces here. It would form two one-bedroom units. The shared garden would be provided to the north of the building. The building falls in line with the terrace row to continue the pattern of development and adds a um, green space to the west to mirror what you see in the character of the area. The access to the footpaths I mentioned would be moved to the northern edge of the site to ensure that there is a straight view um, through for crime safety reasons. Four parking spaces would be provided on the um, garage site itself and three additional parking spaces provided on the road. This shows the elevations. So this front elevation would be fronting the street scene. While the terrace row next door does not front the street scene, this provides active surveillance of the car park, which is important for crime safety reasons. And the rear would still have an active frontage um, to comply with the terraces and to match in character. To the side elevation, there's no windows proposed at the um, first floor and some patio doors are proposed at ground floor to overlook the garden that is part of the development site, again for crime safety reasons. Just to take you quickly through the floor plans, so the ground floor would be a one bedroom flat. The bathroom and kitchen would face the um, car park to ensure that anyone in the car park could not look directly into a bedroom or a living room where people spend most of their time. Um, and you can see the doors that lead into the garden. 
at first floor, you would walk up the stairs from a side entrance and you'd have a similar layout with bathroom and kitchen by fronting Maiden Castle and a bedroom and living room to the rear. So this is the, the street scene of the proposal. So if you look to the left, you can see here it's 62 Maiden Castle. You can see the proposal is slightly higher um, due to the, the land levels being higher in this part of the Maiden Castle. However, the roof's been amended to make sure that it is only um, 0.4 higher than that building and there are steps in the street scene so it wouldn't appear out of character. Um, hopefully you can see on the right, we've got the roof of 63 Maiden Castle, um, which is a similar height to the proposed dwelling overall. Um, and you can see that there is a good separation between these two buildings. 63 Maiden Castle has a garden which comes up to here. This would be the alleyway that's mentioned. So it's a very short distance between the two um, gardens. And then this is the shared garden for the proposed um, flats. The um, ground floor window would obviously be obscured by this fence to stop any overlooking and no windows are proposed at first floor and this side elevation. So in conclusion, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Hannah. Well, we have um, four speakers on this. I'd like to call now uh, Mr. Andrew Gray, please, to come and speak first. And Mr. Gray, good evening. If you'd introduce yourself and in what capacity you speak, please. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. My name is Andrew Gray. I'm a Charter Town Spanner, Planner, speaking on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Mizon, who live at number 63 Maiden Castle. Thank you. You have three minutes. Thank you very much. I submitted an objection letter to the Council last week, which I, I refer members to when considering this application. I draw members' attention to the Northamptonshire parking standards, which stipulate that a one-bedroom flat will require one parking space and one visitor parking space. The revised application forms claim that there are 13 existing spaces and that the scheme proposes just one additional space. This is contrary to standard. Furthermore, the block plan, revision O, shows a total of 10 spaces in total, which is a clear reduction in the parking provision from the baseline position. It's clear from the officer's report that the provision of parking has not been appraised correctly and that the Highway Authority are suggesting a condition relating to a now superseded drawn in paragraph 6.4. Consequently, neither the Highway Authority or the Council can be seen to have properly assessed the development, which results in the loss of communal parking spaces where residents might be reasonably expected to park near their own property. Inevitably, there will be an increased parking along the main street scene harmful to the character and appearance of the area, as well as to highway safety. I also refer members to Appendix 6 of the Council's Residential Design Guide, SPD, which requires a separation distance of 21 metres, where properties have a back-to-back -back relationship. In this instance, the front elevation to the upper floor flat is identified by the front door to the property. The SPD requires an additional one metre separation distance for every one metre change in level, this, re this results in the need for 22 metres of separation. The proposal provides just 16 metres, which shows that the scheme will have a harmful effect on residential amenity. The case officer has based their appraisal on a side to rear relationship where you'd reasonably expect a blank gable, not, a, not windows to habitable rooms. The case officer has also failed to give sufficient weight to save policy E20 design, as the High Court case of Paul Newman Home illustrates. Whilst the council do not have a five-year land supply for housing, the provision of two small one-bed flats will not significantly boost housing supply and would only carry limited weight. The scheme is a contrived form of development, harmful to the character and appearance of the street scene with displacement and shortfall and parking provision. It is also unacceptable in regard to a residential amenity. The proposal should not be considered to represent good design, which is a key aspect to attain and sustainable development. The benefits of the proposal do not outweigh the harm, regardless of the housing land supply position, and I respect, respectfully urge members to refuse this application on the, for reasons outlined within my objection letter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Gray. If you'd just remain with us in case the committee have got any questions to ask of you. Um, committee, do you have anyone any questions to ask of Mr Gray, please? Nobody's indicating, Chair. Right. Thank you, Mr. Gray. 
I now call upon Sue Tukmanian, please, if you come forward and identify yourself um, and in what capacity you speak. Uh, now, Sue, I'm prepared to give you a little bit of latitude because of your underlying health issues, which you've registered with me. So I'm prepared to allow you four minutes to speak, but I can't allow any more. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Councillor Oldman. My name is Susan Superman John Tavara, and I am speaking about objecting to these plans. Okay, you have four minutes at the maximum. Thank you. Thank you. The new proposed building is not viable in such a restricted space and doesn't comply with the council's own regulations regarding all aspects of the proposed build. We all have a right to park our cars. There is no option to park in the front of our homes. The car park is a community that is used by visitors and people who reside here since its construction, therefore should be available for use as intended. No extra parking will be made. We are going to increase the population, but decrease the parking space. This is illogical. Pine trees T4 and T5 shall now remain. The original plan sought to remove them in favour of extra car parking. I agree. McIntyre's report mentioned that the pine trees are too large for the state. I agree. I am disabled. The pine drop causes me great hardship because I cannot walk on them. I have no access to my own back gate because of them. No account is made for this. Privacy issues are a significant, significant concern from 63 to 68 maiden parties. We will be able to see into the flats and gardens very well. The flats will overlook our garden, which is not acceptable. The proposed flats are the wrong orientation to the surrounding area. There will be a high boundary fence, which will encourage crime as they can hide between 60 degrees fence and a new building fence. It is not acceptable. There actually isn't going to be any extra lighting and no wheelchair access at all, as there will be steps. The space is too narrow. If there is a fire, the fire engine is a long wall and won't be able to turn to the five corners because of the space that will be created. The ambulance has had difficulty getting around the state due to cars parked on both sides of the road. It has been frozen. There is no access to the road in the front of our home. There will be no access for emergency vehicles for houses 61 to 64 if this building goes ahead. There will be an issue of flooding, particularly to number 63. A new build will be an obstruction. The flood waters on the higher elevated road flow in the gardens like a torrent, causing flooding in their homes. Some persons living here are disabled like No credence is given to this. There has been no survey of the impact on people's lives this building goes ahead. COPD is a lung disease, adding dust particles in the air with the current conviction is construction is already affecting me. If it happens at the end of my time, it has a serious effect on my health. The garages should be reused. They will continue to bring income into the council. From the current point of renting four garages, the same revenue can be met as if it were the price of the flat. These are 1970s housing estates and the planners of the day gave us limited the estate cannot support these extra dwellings. They were not designed for it. There isn't sufficient space. The council should be mindful of the human element. Constructing these flats will not necessarily be beneficial to the housing shortage and should be given very little credence other than refusing the plan. The people of Maiden Park will implore you to refuse planning permission for the proposed because it will be detrimental to our lives and will have a huge impact upon us for the world. Thank you very much.
Okay. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for that. I mean, it wasn't easy, but thank you. You just remain with us in case the committee have got any questions to ask of you, please. Okay. Committee, do you have any questions to ask of Sue, please? Uh, nobody's indicating, Chair. Right, thank you. And uh, thank you, Sue. I now call upon Laura Elliott, please. Laura, you'd have to identify yourself again for the purpose of this application and in what capacity you speak, please. Yes, Chair. Um, thank you. It's Laura Elliott and I'm project manager with the plan investment team for Northampton Partnership Homes. OK, thank you. You have three minutes. Great, thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so firstly, Chair and committee, I'm pleased to report that we're um, currently making excellent progress with nine previously approved um, sites across Blackthorn. Uh, so we're, we're currently in the process of building 15 homes on former garage sites. Um, and a range of house types to meet those housing needs that Helen highlighted earlier. Um, I would also say that working with NGR contractor, we've managed to continue during the uh, COVID-19 lockdown, despite the obvious um, challenges that have, have come with that and um, following strict advice from the Construction Leadership Council. Um, so we're doing quite well there. Um, we've been longer in development with this application for some time um, in order to respond effectively to the concerns and the consultation with local residents. So the proposals before you this evening reflect um, some of those agreed changes. So just recapping the primary concerns of um, the local residents, uh, certainly around local parking provision, as we've, we've heard from our two speakers this evening. Um, the position of the property, its proximity to number 63 in particular with um, a narrow path at the rear. Um, and so we've, we've actually been able to make um, a lot of changes which have accommodated those comments. Um, masonets have been rotated to fit with the current housing line as, um, as highlighted uh, by Hannah materials um, and uh, the layout uh, are now completely in keeping with what you'd expect to see in, in Blackthorn. Um, the communal garden and levels have been adjusted uh, to enable that path to be widened, um, taking into account security fears and safety of people using the path. As Hannah highlighted, we've reduced the ridge height again to reduce that visual impact. Um, and um, we've, I think we've already actually removed the tree that Hannah highlighted as well. Um, at the request that that was actually making the path dangerous even prior to starting work. Um, with regards to the parking specifically, um, I also wanted to highlight that we're working on three other sites in Maiden Castle at the moment, and we've worked very closely with the local residents to minim minimize the impact um, on parking and to find creative solutions. I should, I should highlight that those developments will all be completed before we could possibly commence with this site. So um, all temporary parking spaces that have been removed or that in the, in the process of being worked on at the moment would, would, would be back. And they're all within very short walking distance of the, um, the site um, that in discussion this evening, uh, the application in discussion this evening. Um, also just wanted to highlight that there won't be a net loss in highways compliant parking spaces um, and that they have actually confirmed that they're satisfied with the arrangements. Um, so it, yeah, uh, just, just really to, to conclude by trying to reassure um, on behalf of MPH and our contractors that for the duration of the construction, we'd work hard to maintain good relations um, and minimize the impact of those works and that ultimately the completed development would be an asset for uh, new residents and existing neighbors. Well, right, thank you, Laura. Uh, <clears throat> if you just remain with us for a moment. Committee, any questions to ask of Laura, please? Councillor Birch and Councillor Markham are indicating, Chair. Right, Councillor Birch, Jane, please, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Laura, um, Susan mentioned the fact that disability access is tricky. I wasn't, I, you know, I didn't catch every detail she talked about, but I understand that disability access to the property could be a problem. 
have you looked at this carefully and you know, is that now resolved? Um, well, yeah, Laura, go so, on. Yeah. Councillor Birch, yeah. So in terms of the property type itself, um, our B1 house types, the bungalows, have um, front and back level thresholds and are designed specifically for wheelchair users. Um, our other house types do, um, at some places, uh, incorporate steps, particularly where you've seen that there's a, um, a challenge with the levels on this particular site. Um, with regards to parking spaces, in, in, there are no existing disabled parking spaces in this location at the moment. On other sites where we have had um, disabled residents already with allocated disabled parking or that have um, you know, blue badges and have come forward to, to request those things, then we have been able to implement them. So certainly going forward, um, we'd be um, more than happy to, to, to work on a practical level with, with any new consultees to see what could be done there. Thank you. Councillor Markham, Brian, yes, please. Uh, yes, if I could, um, Chair, uh, Laura mentioned the, uh, I think, three of the developments in Maiden Council. Um, ju just to get this right, the overall, I, are you saying, Laura, that there is no, if you take all those developments within Maiden Castle, there is no change or uh, in, maybe even a positive in, uh, change to um, the number of parking spaces? Laura, yeah. Yeah, that's that's correct, Councillor Markham. We've um, we I mean it, we've had to because of the nature of these sites and and with the um, the parking issues that obviously do already exist in in the Blackthorn area, we've had to work very carefully to look look not just on a site by site basis but a, a broader picture across the areas. So um, as I say. With regards to the other Maiden Castle sites, it's a very short walking distance. Um, and we, in, in some of those Maiden Castle sites, there will be more parking going in as a result of this. So it, it's taking a balanced view, view across, across, the, um, across the road. Well, thank you. Are there any more questions to ask of Laura, please? Councillor Hack, Anna? Uh, through you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you once again. Um, Laura, um, in terms of um, pre, um, um, uh, in terms of in general uh, consultation, um, um, I suppose you've had, you must have had some pre sort of um, advice from the planning officers um, and maybe, um, you know, had some cons uh, consultation with the local um, councillors and the you know the, the stakeholders there in, in 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 that particular area what have you picked up um and how have you um um amended or change of how, how you know what have you picked up and how have you addressed them issues okay um councillor hack uh, sorry just to clarify is that in in terms of the, the 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 points that we picked up on parking antisocial behavior and and visual impact uh yes yes yeah thank you okay so um yeah so so firstly the um you know we we'd, you you would have heard from uh Hannah this evening that the residents wanted to maintain access to a, um, a, a play area that's located um, in close proximity to the site but that's only pedestrian ac ac accessible. Um, so we've worked to both widen and um, make uh, and maintain that access uh, and that, that seems to be an important thing um, for the local residents. With regards to the parking, as I said, we've had to take an overall view um, across Maiden Castle. Uh, so some of the sites, you know, with this site, there's no there's no kind of real net loss. But actually, we we we've also increased it in in some of the developments, um, and also certain things with regards to uh, and it's not a secure by design development, but we certainly have taken comments on board in relation to. Um, 
putting a uh, trellis on top of fencing and some of those secure by design features that will ultimately improve the area. Also, um, I, I would just like to say that um, we've we've recently completed um, about three and a half million pounds worth of estate regeneration works in 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 Blackthorn. So the the new build development um, the, the new build developments that are going on at the moment very much reflect that that work that has happened to existing council owned properties with new front doors um, and other external facing materials. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. <coughs> anyone, <coughs> excuse me, anyone else got any uh, questions to ask of Laura, please? Chair, Councillor Carley and Councillor Birch are in the Councillor Carley, Muna, yeah, please. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to basically add, um, just wanted to see where if, if the, um, I've heard a couple of times it's been mentioned in terms of like emergency access uh, to be reachable. Has that been looked at? Um, yeah, yeah, Councillor Carly, I would just, my, my response to that would be that highways have confirmed that they're satisfied with the arrangements that we've proposed. Also with the um, the three off-road parking spaces that are being created, obviously that, that will um, prevent cut some cars from parking quite dangerously directly on the road just as you approach that bend. Um, so the, the um, whilst we're not, um, uh, we're not um, necessarily increasing the net parking. We are uh, creating safe and highways compliant parking. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Muna. Councillor Birch, Jane, yeah. Thank you, Chair. It's really supplementary um, to my previous question about um, access for disabled residents. And if I understand it correctly, Susan was saying that the, her, the access to her property would be more difficult as a result of this development. Please correct me if I'm wrong there, Susan, but um, that's what, you know, I understood that it was going to make life more difficult for you if this plan went ahead. So can I ask Laura that that is not the case, that she has looked at the requirements of existing residents and the access from parking to their property? Thank you. Laura? Um, yes, Councillor Birch, as I said before, that isn't something that's been specifically raised with us as part of the consultation previously, um, but certainly the access requirements um, and, and the uninhibited access to other properties would have been taken into consideration um, during the development phase of this. So, Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else got any questions, please? No? Nobody's indicating, Chair. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Laura. And I'll call upon Mr. Chris Paul, please. Chair, Chris is... Um, sorry, sorry, Laura, you say? Chris, Chris, is poor, Chris is poorly, I'm afraid. So is it no one taking his, his slot? So there's, there's no speaker substituting. OK. It, All right. If it's, if, it's, if it's acceptable, I'm happy to take his place, although I think Laura's covered most of the points that Chris okay. would have raised. Okay, Helen, thank you. Uh, well, just to move on, um, committee, have you got any questions to ask of Hannah, please? Nobody's indicating. Oh, Councillor Birch is indicating, Chair. Councillor Birch, Jane. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, Hannah, one of your neighbours um, has raised the point about um, solar panels. Is this um, a cause for concern? Thank you, Chair. Um, the proposal doesn't include any mention to solar panels. Um, I'm not sure why the neighbour had that concern, but obviously they could do it in the future if they applied, but it's not proposed at this time. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else got any questions to ask of Anna, please? No? Nobody, Chair. Okay. So... Chair, sorry, Anna. Hannah would like to come back. Yeah, Hannah, go on. On the, on the points that's been raised, 
Anna, yes, would you like sorry. to come back before I go to comments? Yeah. Yes, please, Chair. Just to respond to some of the points that were raised. Um, with regard to the disabled access, um, I believe it's concern about the retention of the pine trees um, and the pine cones at least drop on the pathway and the difficulty with this. There's no actual change to the access to neighbouring properties as a result of this, other than the parking changes. Um, and obviously we can't make them chop down a tree as a result of the proposal. We have consulted the tree officer and they are happy with what's proposed. Um, in line with that, Mr Gray mentioned that highways refer to a super, um, a super city drawing as being acceptable. This is actually the same um, site plan as highways saw. However, the trees um, that were referred to um, before um, were originally going to be removed as part of this application. Um, the tree officer then asked for them to be retained and therefore the site plan has been altered to keep those trees. And that is the only change from when Highway saw the retention of those two trees, which aren't near any of the development site. Um, all other points are covered in the addendum report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Anna. <clears throat> right, so we've, we've had the one question, so can we now go on to comments, please, committee? Nobody's indicating, Chair. Okay, well, right, committee. The officer's recommendation is that we approve this application. Do I have a proposal that we do that, please? Councillor Russell, proposing, yeah, a seconder. Councillor Carley had a hand up. Councillor Carley seconder, thank you. All those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation for approval? I count nine hands in the air, Chair. So that is approved unanimously. Thank you very much for all those that took a part. Thank you very much. Right, committee. We now come on to item 12D. Uh, 12D on page 47. And that is land adjacent to Broom Court, Onsborough Road. And it's the installation of a brick built bin enclosure with drop curb adjacent to 34 to 56 Broom Court. Um, Rita, this is your report. Would you like to present it, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, this is uh, a quite simple uh, develop development uh, for Broom Court. Excuse, this is the application site to the east of Hunsborough Road. Uh, this is Broom Court, which is a, a block of flat. Just the area photographs for you. As you can see from the photographs, uh, this is Broom Court. The, bike, uh, the, the bin enclosure will be positioned in this area here. As you can see, there's a different side level from Broom Court to the actual installation. So the structure will not be uh, really obstructing the window to the front. Just show you the plant. As you can see, uh, it is going to be a simple structure on three sides. This is a plant form. Uh, will be in brick built. There won't be a roof to the top. So it can accommodate three Euro bins. Uh, in that position. As you can see across in this location plan, this is where the bin storage is going to be. And there will be a drop curb to be installed to the front of the structure so that uh, binmen can maneuver the Euro bin quite easily. Uh, obviously the facilities will benefit the local residents and we have received no objection from any residents nor en environmental health for this uh, development. Uh, just show you one more photograph, another, another angle. Uh, obviously, you can see there are some parking spaces to the front. So two spaces will be removed and the ground will be uh, sprayed with red, uh, white lining to show that 
there will be a drop curve for the bin enclosure in this position. So uh, through you, Chair, um, there's no further comment to make and the recommendation is for approval. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Rita. Well, we did have a speaker, uh, Mr. Paul, but he unfortunately is, is ill. I'm, I wish him a speedy recovery. Now, there's no one in speaking against, but I would uh, ask Helen, if you're still there, if you just remain there in case the committee have got any questions to raise and ask of you. There's no need for you at this particular junction to speak, I feel. So the committee can ask questions either of uh, Rita or yourself, if you'll be prepared to answer any questions the committee might ask. Can I just jump in, Chair, and let you know that Councillor Carley has left the meeting? Thank you very much. So we now have eight members left. Thank you very much. So if, if you're all right with that, Helen, if you just remain there in case the committee's got any questions, I'm prepared to accept that. Is Helen, are you there? Oh, right. Sorry, apologies, sorry. Yes, I'm here, happy to take any questions. Okay, we'll just leave it at that, Helen. We don't no need to speak. If the committee's got any questions, they can ask it of you. I'll allow them to ask it of you or, or uh, Rita as well. So, committee, any questions to ask of Rita or Helen, for that matter? To me, this is a perfectly straightforward application. Um, I can't see anything in it that causes me any alarms. I know the area quite well. And uh, it, it seems to fall in accordance with everything that's needed. Councillor Hack, Enum. Is a question, to, may move the questions too, please. Sorry, Chair, it's not, it's not a question. I, I was going to propose that we move on. Uh, I propose that we accept officer's recommendation and move on. Well, I'm prepared at this stage to take it if uh, the rest of the committee are. Um, if there's no objection to your proposal in the sense that somebody wants to debate it, I'm quite happy for that. A Councillor Lane was indicating, Chair. What's that? Happy. I was happy to second Councillor Hack's proposal. Okay, fine. I've got a proposal in Councillor Hack that we accept the officer's recommendation for approval and seconded by Councillor Lane. Jamie, thanks to both of you. Members, all those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation for approval, please. That's eight hands in the air, Chair. So that's, that's approved unanimously. Thank you, committee. Thank you. Right. We now move on to item 12E, which is on page 51, committee. Um, this uh, is first court, Onsborough Road, close by to the previous application. Similarly, it's an installation of a brick built bin enclosure adjacent to two to 24 first court with access path. Rita, this is your report. Again, would you please present it? Thank you, Chair. Again, this is a very similar application with the previous one. Uh, this is in first court. Um, can you see? Yeah, this yeah. is the, the application site against to the east of uh, Hansborough Road. Um, I'll show you the photograph, uh, the, the area photographs, and this is the site where the bin enclosure is going to locate. Again, it is uh, further away from the window to the residence. This is the plan, as you can see, very similar structure, and this time the enclosure will be sideways on to the wall that you saw there. Again, another angle here. And there will be a drop curb again for the Eurobin to go out to the road in that position. So currently, uh, because there are some works around the area, that's why those porter cabins there, but they will be removed subsequently. So all in all, Chair, uh, again, there's no objections from any residents nor environmental health. So the recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rita. Well, similarly to the previous application, the thing is status quo. Helen's still there. Do we need to refer any questions to her? Or 
committee, do we have any questions to Rita or uh, Helen? Councillor Russell, Catherine, you've got your hand up, yeah, please. This is a, a question to Rita. In the photograph where you showed, um, I think it was the first photograph, there was a wall and you indicated that bin store would be dough. Would there be any problems um, with with um, any any noise or, or smell at that window? Rita, would you uh, come back on that? Yeah, through you, Chair. Um, it, it wouldn't be because they are Euro bins, they have cover uh, for the bins. So they're enclosure simply just to make it tidier, really. Um, so um, it, it wouldn't be any more than uh, an, an, any other uh, arrangement and environmental health is quite happy with the proposal. Okay, thank you. Anyone else got any uh, questions, please, either to Rita or to Helen? No? Nobody's indicating, Chair. Right. Any comments from anyone, please? As I said, I know this area as well, pretty well, um, to me. Uh, there's no reason for us to um, be unhappy with it in my particular eyes, but I'm quite prepared to listen to anybody else who's got a different opinion. Uh, Councillor Lane would like to come in. Councillor Lane, Jamie, yeah. Happy to propose we accept the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Jamie. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Hack, Enham, yeah. Okay, all those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation for approval? That's eight hands in the air, Chair. That's, that's approved unanimously, thank you. Right, committee, we now come on to item 12F on page 55, <clears throat> which is at, at 191 Fullingdale Road. The description of this application is a demolition of outbuilding and erection of new single story side extension together with new off-road parking and drop curb. Uh, Nikki, good evening. I believe this is your report. Would you like to represent it, please? Thank you, Chair. Okay, so this is the, the application site here. Apologies, sorry, my keyboard just got stuck there. Um, so aerial view of the site, and then this is the, the property on the right-hand side here. So the proposals to demolish this outbuilding that you can see on the right-hand side, and then also um, create a, a vehicular access to the front just behind where the bonnet of that car is. There's, you could probably just about make out a small um, low retaining wall. Part of that will stay. Part of it will be removed to, to create the access. The, the tree that you can see in the, the picture there, well, that will be retained. Just a view from the rear of the site. So again, that's the, the single story outbuilding on the left hand side that's to be removed. So this is the, the property as existing. You can see the existing outbuilding there. So the proposed extension, which is um, in red there, is um, exactly the same footprint as the outbuilding to be removed. And as you can see, similar in appearance. Um, there's a, a side boundary fence, which would obscure any views from that door. And there's an obscure glazed window there. The extension is to provide a, a storage area at the front and then a, a wet room to the back of the extension. And then the vehicular access would be across here with hard paving to the front of the property. In terms of the extension materials, there's a condition to require materials to, to match the existing property. Um, the Highway Authority raised no objection to the proposal. There's similar access, um, vehicular accesses along Flingdale Road within the area. Therefore, um, officer recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you, Nicky. <clears throat> well, we do, do have a gentleman who, who, Mr. Jonathan Evans, who wants to speak for it as on behalf of Northampton Partnership Homes. Uh, Mr. Evans, you don't have to speak unless you really want to, but if you'd be there for just any reference for any questions, because there's nobody objecting and speaking against it. So um, if you'd like to be in, on hand for any questions the officers might ask, uh, that would be acceptable to me if it's acceptable to you. Uh, thanks, Chair. I have, no, I have nothing to add, really. You're thank okay you. with that, okay? Yes, right. yes, thank you, Chair. Right, committee, we have Mr. Evans in situ, and we have Nikki there. If you've got any questions to ask of this, Arthur, do I detect your hand being up there, Arthur? Councillor Cutchin? Yeah? I, I can't hear you. You need to unmute yourself, Arthur. Can't hear you. Arthur, you need to unmute yourself. Can anybody help Arthur out? Daisy, can you help Councillor McCutcheon out, please? Unmuted. Yes, Arthur, yes. you've got your dulcet tones yes. back now. Please carry on. Well, here's the entertainment then. Um, Actually, I visited that site this morning, um, and it's now in the status of being largely a retrospective application. Uh, and uh, I was a, a bit unhappy about that because uh, it's very different, not very different, it is decidedly different, however, from the applications we've made. The, uh, the uh, parking across the front of the property now stretches from side to side. Uh, and it's not just in one store and out, it's all the way uh, the, that uh, has been uh, leveled uh, and tarmacked. The um, site to the side um, looks as though it's already been done. It's new walls and uh, new, uh, pave, uh, may, new um, uh, gravel, uh, the attachment, you know, the uh, screening on on the side of the desk. Uh, so this is, in fact, a retrospective application, and I don't know how we feel about that. Um, Nikki, would you like to come back on that, or or, or Jonathan, Nikki, somebody? Uh, yes, I'm <laughs> coming back. Okay, yeah. Sorry, uh, is, jo is Jonathan coming back? Go on, Jonathan. <clears throat> you have first shout. Go on. So I was just going to say that, uh, Chair, that uh, that the the work in the outbuildings hasn't uh, hasn't been uh, carried out as yet. Um, the reason for the drop curb is because we have uh, an immediate uh, disabled tenant uh, in the property, actually disabled child. I do apologise. Uh, the reason for the drop curb was to allow for the bus that collects him to take him to the care facility every day was required. The outbuilding is to accommodate a level access shower for the child um, in the property, and uh, therefore that hasn't been carried out just yet. Okay, Arthur, okay. you got that? Yes, that seems fine, Chair. Thank you. Anyone else got any questions, either to Nikki or to Jonathan, please? Uh, Councillor Birch is indicating, Chair. Councillor Birch, Jane, who's the question to, Jane, please? It'll be to, to um, Mr. Evans. Okay, carry on. Thank you. Um, I'm a little bit, I'd just like a bit of clarification on the actual application. Um, the applicant is NPH, the agent is Sketch House Limited. Um, as I understood it, NPH normally did work on their own properties. What is the situation here? Just to clarify that connection, please. Jonathan, please. Absolutely. So just to confirm, Sketch House are our architects, so they're doing the uh, the, the uh, working drawings for us. Okay. All right. Anyone else got any questions to ask of either Jonathan or Nikki? No? Nobody's indicating, Chair. All right. Comments, committee. Anybody got any comments, please? Councillor Goldby would like to come in, Councillor Goldby, Matt, yes, please. 
Yeah, thanks, Chair. I was just going to suggest that this seems a very reasonable application and um, doesn't unduly affect street scene, as it says in the report, and I'm happy to propose we accept the recommendations. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that, Councillor Lane, Jamie? The seconder, Jamie? Yeah, okay. So I have a proposal and a seconder that we accept the officer's recommendation for approval. Do I have everybody showing hands in that respect? That's eight hands in the air, Chair. Thank you, Ed. So that means the application is approved unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Committee. We now come on to item 12G, which is on page 61. And this is uh, for the community room at 19A Blackberry Lane, and it's a change of use from the community room, Class D2 to a dwelling use class C3 with off-road parking and drop curb and demolition of link office structure. <clears throat> Nikki, this is your report again. Would you like to present it, please? Thank you, Chair. So this is the application site here. Just a, an aerial view. You can see the, the surrounding area is predominantly residential. So this is the, the community building here. Um, and if you just note, there's an existing office link to the attached um, property dwelling there. That link is actually proposed to be removed as part of the application. A vehicular access would be created just to the front of where you can see that shrubbery there. And this grassed area here would become um, a parking area for, for two vehicles. This, the, the front entrance that you can see there, that would actually become the front entrance to the, the bungalow. Just a, another view from the, the street. And this is a view from the other end of the building. You can see probably a bit clearer there, the, um, the link that's to, to be demolished as part of the application. Um, this would be the, the rear of the property and there would be um, boundary treatment around here that would provide uh, an enclosed rear garden for the property. And this is just um, to show you the context of the, the properties opposite the road. So this is the existing plan and the proposed. So here you can see the, the front entrance to the property. The existing windows would be blocked up from the, from the base just to create a bit more privacy. And again, on the elevation facing towards the, the street. This would be the rear elevation with French doors, um, patio doors put in to, to go out onto the garden. So this would be the rear garden here and the boundary treatment would extend around the property and the two parking spaces here with vehicular access. In terms of um, loss of community centre, planning policy generally seeks to protect community facilities within the area. MBH have confirmed that this, this site is underutilised. They've, they've done a survey of, of the use of community hubs within the area. And this is the one as one of the ones within the area that's underutilised. There, there is a, another community centre, as I understand it, at um, Parsons Mead, which is approximately four minutes away from this facility. So that would provide alternative community facilities for residents in the surrounding area. Um, there is, um, it's not on the addendum, but there, there is an additional condition proposed just to agree in respect to boundary treatments. Currently it's proposed to have a 1.8 metre fence around the rear garden, um, but uh, planning officers would like further discussion. The, the parking area that's just to the side of, of, of this plan off just off this plan there's actually brick walls um, a characteristic of that parking court there so we'd look for further discussion with MPH to see if it's feasible to to have a wall rather than a boundary fence so the, the application's recommended for approval with an additional condition to agree boundary treatments thank you chair thank you Nikki and um, while we have um, Jonathan still there and Helen I'm assuming you're still there Helen if you need it in the absence of Chris. 
Has she gone? No, I'm here. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, Chair. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Well, there's nobody speaking against this. Um, so if you and Jonathan are there to answer any questions, should the committee have any? Um, and I believe that Councillor Russell, Catherine, you have. Who have you got the question for, um, Catherine? Uh, the question is for, I'm not sure, either Helen or Nikki. It would be whoever thought or whoever considered they would have the knowledge. Um, the local councillor there has said that the centre is used every day and the last will be further um, isolate vulnerable residents in the local community. Do we know that to be the case? Can I jump in there, Catherine? Because I know this 200%. 200% I know this answer to this one. Because the majority of the Blackberry Lane residents do not use this. It is very much underused. The majority of them that use a community centre use the one near me, Parsons Mead. So it, 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 I can't agree with the local councillor's comments there that it's used every day. It's very much underused. And, and quite frankly, that, that, that is in no, to me, that's no reason why we should look at this negatively. The majority of the Blackberry Lane residents where the user community centre go to Parsons Mead, which is used virtually every day. That's pre, pre, uh, that's pre Coronavirus time, I might it might hasn't to her. But so I, I can save Nikki or Helen coming in on that one because I do know firsthand. If you'll accept my answer. Oh, absolutely, thank you. And and I guess if it was such a, an urgent situation, the councillor would have um, been here to present herself. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Anyone else got any questions? Councillor Birch would like to come in. Councillor Birch, Jane, yeah. Thank you. Actually, I can ask this question in a view, um, Brian. Um, yeah. As I, I mean, I, I, I do know um, that activities in the area have taken place in in this um, in this centre in the past. Um, people living in Blackberry um, Lane, is it Blackberry Lane? Yeah, Blackberry. Yes, it is. Um, yes. A one point two mile walk to Parsons Mead. Um, do they have to cross the A45 in order to do this? Because I know it's an uphill walk mm. and it is across a busy road. So No, it's, it's so, it, sorry, Jane, it's subway. We get under a subway. I must, I must confess, well, what Nikki said, um, it's only four minutes away. I wouldn't like to walk it in four minutes, but it, it is very close. As the crow flies, it's probably four minutes. Well, it's probably two, but... It's accessible by a uh, subway. You don't have to cross that road. And there is a, a bus service that goes there every 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Anyone else got any questions? Not necessarily to me, but to, but to Jonathan and or Helen lurking in the wings. No indications, Chair. Okay, so we come to comments, uh, committee. Um, any comments, Councillor Lane, Jamie? Yeah. Just happy that we accept the officer's recommendation. So that's a proposal. Do I have a seconder, please? The seconder, Councillor Hack Enham. Thank you. So all those in favour that we accept the officer's recommendation for approval. That's eight hands in the air, Chair. That, that is approved unanimously. Thank you, committee. Right. We now come on to the last, but by no means least, item on the agenda. Item 12H, which is on page 57, page, sorry, page 67, committee, which is the location is a 24 mortar pit road which is a new porch to front entrance together with garage conversion. Uh, Hannah, this is your report. Would you present it, please? Thank you, Chair. So just first to point out, there's no updates in the addendum for this one. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the application site is a mid-terrace property. I'll just show an aerial image, this is this property here. Okay, 
So it's this site with the blue garage door. The proposal is for a single story extension um, to the side in, the, in filling this gap, but up to this window and to convert the garage into a um, habitable room. So remove the garage door, build up with brickwork and insert two windows. So just to confirm the extension would go up to this window and this garage door would be removed. And this just shows that you wouldn't really see it from the street scene because it is in line with this existing wall. So as you said, the proposal here is the um, small single story extension at the front and the garage doors are removed and you get two small windows. And the proposal doesn't um, increase the number of bedrooms. It actually just makes one of them larger and converts the very small bedroom into a study. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, well, there are no speakers on this and, and Jonathan's still there with us. Um, any questions committed to either Jonathan or Anna on this uh, application, please? Nobody's indicating, Chair. Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Brian Markham is. Councillor Markham, Brian, yes, please. Yeah, I'll um, just ask um, Hannah, um, am I right in thinking that um, if this was not an MPH application, but, uh, but a private somebody a private owner of that property it would have probably gone through the planning system without coming to committee delegated decision you mean a absolutely yes yeah, yeah. And it as it wasn't called in yes yeah, yeah. through you chair yes if it wasn't an mph application and it wasn't called in it would be a delegated decision that's correct great thank you Anyone else got any questions, Amanda, please? <clears throat> Nobody's okay. indicating, Chair. Thank you, Ed. Comments, committee? Any comments, please? Councillor Lane, Jamie? Yeah, I can't see a problem with this. Happy to accept the officer's recommendation. I've got Councillor Lane as a proposition, as a proposer. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Golby. Councillor Golby seconding. Thank you. Right, committee, the officer's recommendation is for approval. Do I have a show of hands to say that we're happy with that? Eight hands in the air, Chair. And that is approved unanimously as well. Thank you very much. Well, committed. there's no items under item 13. That brings a close to the meeting. I want to thank all the speakers, the officers, and you, the committee, for how you've gone on this maiden voyage that we've had by Zoom. So thank you all very much, unless you've got any comments. Um, well done, Brian. Uh, 